Welcome to the beautiful Oconomowoc Arts Center. We're here for the 2017-18 Chatfield Award presentation. The Oconomowoc Chamber Orchestra presents this award annually to those people in our community who reach out in special ways and help the arts and the community grow. This year we present the award to Dave and Betty Royal. Dave and Betty have done so many things. We have special guests who help share some of the things that they have done in our community. Here we go. We welcome Dr. John King, former director of instruction at the Oconomowoc Area Schools, a principal of our schools, and also a teacher. Here's John. Well, I first met Dave uh, in 1953. That's uh, 65 years ago at the old um, Milwaukee State Teachers College. It is now known as UWM, but at that time, both Dave and I had made a decision that we wanted to be teachers. And that's where I ran into Dave. And more specifically, Dave not only wanted to be a teacher, but he wanted to be a music teacher. After we both graduated, there was a stint in the military where I went to Fort Benning, and I'm not sure I know where, where Dave went. But upon completing our military services, our paths crossed again paths with being coming teachers in the Oconomowoc school system back in 1960. I think Dave came to the Oconomowoc school system in 1959. So we go back quite a few years. The most memorable events uh, that I recall was Dave and myself when I was principal of the junior high had to do with a school that was overcrowded, 1,300 kids in a building made, meant for 850. And uh, I, as you would imagine, having that many uh, early adolescents together, there were some interesting and some trying days. And I, I remember most vividly that on those days when things were really going wrong, and I needed to have some kind of respite to get away from uh, all of the things that were happening, I would trot down to the rehearsal room where Dave's band would be practicing. And it was the most relaxing and most invigorating experience to see David as a master in art of teaching, motivating children to perform at the highest level that they could possibly perform and that I could go back and be in a relaxed state and continue to do my job. So I found myself frequently down there in the band room listening to these marvelous students playing this beautiful music directed by Dave and his commitment to music and the arts. There was one other incident, I don't know if Dave really remembers this, but it had to do with a cloudburst that occurred one day that caused the flooding of the band room. I can remember going down looking at the damage. There were drums floating around the room and the custodian, Mr. Schuyler, came to me and said, John, what do I do with all this water? I said, Eli, you go down to the, the Laurel Bergs and rent a pump and pump that water out through the window. So he went down and about two hours later he came back in my office he said, John, I don't know what I'm doing. He said, I've been pumping that water for the last two hours and it hasn't gone down an inch. And I said, Eli, let's go down and see what the problem is. So we went down and we looked and what we discovered was where the pipe came out of a window to, to get the water out of there, some of the kids had taken that pipe and ran it through another window so that they were recycling the water without I want to, to this day, know who those kids were that put that pipe in there. I want to give them a creativity award because this was one of the most clever things. But poor Eli, he was just totally frustrated with why didn't that water go down. Earlier I mentioned that David made a decision that he wanted to be a teacher. And he matched that decision by making a commitment to be the best teacher that could ever possibly have been. And he continues to be a teacher uh, in his current uh, events. He made another big decision just shortly after college that he wanted to be married to this wonderful person called Betty. 
and I have had the opportunity and pleasure of observing Betty as someone who is very active in this community, especially supporting the arts. She has been involved heavily with the annual Arts Festival, which has an international reputation. And she also is very active in various volunteer activities and groups, such as the Fitness Center and the Shore and also um, many other groups that have uh, community welfare. In addition to all their volunteer work, they have developed a uh, standing reputation of doing the memorial, uh, being soloist for the annual Memorial Day celebration, as well as the annual Veterans Day celebrations throughout the community. I have a letter that turned up that I wrote 17 years ago talking about Dave's accomplishments and skills as a teacher. This was submitted to the Wisconsin Music Educators Association where they recognize him as the Distinguished Service Award. Some of the things I mentioned in the letter, which I'd just like to point out to you, is Dave's unique ability to motivate students to perform to their greatest capacity. In fact, and I think I mentioned it earlier, that I would, when I became frustrated and uptight in my job, I found myself wandering down to the music room and listened to this wonderful music being taught by this highly skilled teacher called Dave Royal. Also in this, Dave has been active in the community in many, many ways, supporting the arts. I mentioned the annual art festival where he was a significant contributor along with Betty to the success of this particular event that's gone on for many years and has developed an international reputation for supporting strongly the arts of, uh, in Oconomowoc. One other thing I'd like to mention is um, Dave is probably one of the three top teachers I have known in my career. And I have known many, many teachers throughout the uh, 50 some years that I've been involved with uh, both uh, public and uh, private education. And so what I guess what I'm saying, what I just explained to you today is exactly what I talked about 17 years ago. And Dave, in talking to Betty one day, I asked if Dave was home and Dead Betty said to me, you know, Dave is teaching his students. And I said, what do you mean he's teaching his, oh, he continues to teach even to this day. And what Betty said to me made such an impression. He said, when Dave left today, he told me to go teach and I love teaching these kids. And he summarizes the contents of this letter. This letter is as valid today as it was 17 years ago. Another area where Dave and my paths crossed each other had to do with an effort called PACE. PACE stands for Performing Arts Center Enhancements. We were co-chairs in raising $500,000 to add enhancements that were not included in the original high school auditorium concept. Welcome, I'm Michael Duncan, director of the Economic Arts Center. It's my pleasure today to introduce Betty and Dave Royal, who've been nominated this year as our second annual recipients of the Chapel Award. Thank you. Congratulations. Well, thank you very much. It's a great honor. Well, uh, in our experience, you've been involved on so many levels with the Arts Center over the years. And I think a lot of people, after we've been around for 10 years, for the new art center, a lot of folks don't remember so much what happened before we even got to the art center and that original Oconomowoc uh, Arts Council. Uh, it might be kind of interesting for people to remember some of those earlier days of what all that work that went into getting us to this point so that we could get that art center started and moving to what we have now. It was the uh, Oconomowoc Performing Arts Council, and we decided that 
there really needed to be some awareness in the community for the need of an auditorium. So we formed a committee, I think there were nine of us, and we uh, determined that since we had such a rich heritage of Oconomowoc High School graduates who are now professionals in the arts world, that we would do a series of uh, performances. And I think we originally intended to do three years. We got funding from the Rotary, um, and I think a little from the uh, performer, the Oconomowoc Harry Foundation. Foundation. Yes, that was to kick things off to get us going. When we generated yes. our own funds, so. but it was so successful, and we found that we had so many graduates. I think we had a list of seventy. I don't know if I'm exactly. I know that our concert series, which was supposed to be three concerts a year, stretched to five, and then we went for I think a total of over twenty-five concerts by kids that had graduated here, but now are either professional or semi-professional, which is, you know, an incredible amount of uh, uh, data for our high school and the quality of the music program. We were doing music and arts. We did, uh, we started that committee in 2003, and then in 2008, we decided that since the art center was now going to happen, we didn't need to continue. So we then, had been so successful that we um, donated the Charles Dix painting, we did the furnishings in the lobby, we did the green room, and we did a sizable um, financial gift to the OPEF. Yeah. I'd like to ex <coughs> explain a little bit more. That was a win-win-win, because what we had for a performance facility was really lacking. We needed something different, and so we took the small ensemble, the soloists and so forth, out to area churches. And the church venue was great for a soloist. And pointing out the fact to the audiences that we need a facility that, you know, that is better than what we've got right now, which was so overloaded at the time. So it was really a win-win-win that the, uh, the, we, the community uh, won because these people were, you know, being cited as being excellent. Um, they had uh, the Arts Council paid them $1,000 to come and do a recital and go into the schools. So that was a good idea. Um, and we didn't have any trouble finding people to, to sponsor the $1,000. In fact, people, uh, when, uh, when, when this all came to an end, finally, we still had people that were willing to, to pay another $1,000. So it was never a problem. Uh, well, and then, interestingly enough, we didn't intend for it to be a profitable thing. Yeah. But obviously, it, it was a profitable thing because we had a number of ways of supporting the art center when it was built. Now, what were some of the, the facilities that you performed us? Was it local churches? Yes, or churches are out. Yes. Mostly uh, churches. Mm -hmm. And uh, we paid a fee to the church. They were happy to have us. Um, and uh, so I can't remember all of them think with which churches there were, but just almost. Most of the community churches. Yes, and uh, that worked so well. It was an interesting thing because that was kind of the turning point in the community. The, t the conversation evolved from if we build an art center to when we build an art center. Mm -hmm. exactly. And interestingly enough, when uh, Pat Newdecker and the school board started going into the community to talk about the referendum, it was only for the two intermediate schools. And at that point, the community said, what about an art center? What about a field house? And so some of that momentum had helped because people were realizing the need. It was serendipity at that point because the facilities were needed and it just seemed like a position of the moon and the stars was right to have that referendum. Pat Newdaker made the comment at one time about this old Pat. She said, that is the best PR that we on the school board have, have ever seen because the fact that everybody appreciated it, it was, it was such a win-win. So well, uh, the I, audiences were given because it was the performer's paper boy or their babysitter or their student or everybody <laughs> loved having those, those graduates back in the community to perform. Oh, it was really and we also, uh, we had three purposes. Uh, 
when we started OPEC. One was to bring those students back to perform. The other was to interact with the students, which they all did. And the other was to create the awareness for the need for an auditorium. Have yeah, we met all the goals? We did. Yes, Absolutely. And here we are 10 years we later are. in yeah. the 10th anniversary <laughs> season uh, after all that was put together. And it's interesting, I, I should add too, that at the time I remember getting the mailing list from both of you. It was right around 650 names, mm -hmm. give or take. Well, now we're just over 13,000 names on our mailing list, over 4,000 on our email list, and now you've added social media and Facebook and all those things that we didn't have 10 years ago. And we have a lot of people who follow us regularly on those things too. So this whole momentum that you started has just blossomed. Uh, and then I should also say, it's not just a comma in our immediate area. Yeah. If you look at where our patrons come from, depending on the event, we have people from Milwaukee, Madison. Uh, we even had people come in from Chicago to see the Michael Perry show last January because this was the closest that show was going to be. It doesn't happen very often, but it's great to know that we've got folks that far away who follow certain artists or right. programs or whatever, and if we bring them here, they're willing to make the drive to come see us. So. Well, and they do need to interject that Thanks to you, uh, when it came time, Pat and Decker obviously was wise in knowing that we needed a full-time managing director for this facility, which not all school districts would probably acknowledge. So we had 52 applicants from all over the country for that position. David was on the committee that um, reviewed all of the applicants, all of the resumes, and I was on the committee that hired you. And it was yep. it was wonderful. It was like God sent Michael Duncan. And it was just great and you've done a super job. So where do I send the check for you? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Well, it's been a great ten years and I think it's been it's clearly been uh, a great merging of the community yes. and yes. the school district. And I think we don't find as many opportunities, I think, as the school district should to look out and reach out to our community. And what the mission has been here as far as keeping our community engaged and involved and making sure that we have the, the educational needs that the kids have for their educational, their performances, whatever it might be. It, it's been a great marriage. It, it's a little bit of juggling now because our schedule is so tight yeah. these days, which is good because we're using this space all the time now, but it's working. I mean, we can see that in our kids, we can see it in our staff. Um, there's just so many uh, things going well with the district and the community. Yeah, it is. It's it really very is. Nice. Uh, and we are, I should also say that a lot of different school districts who are either have a PAC or they're looking to build one, they'll come here and they'll do a walkthrough. Not that they build the same building necessarily, but the thing they're interested in most is how do you make this work? And they want to emulate the things that are positive about what we can do to see if they can take that to their community. And I've had Germantown want to go. Slinger is now looking at an EAC. A lot of these yeah. groups are coming in. And we're actually going out and meeting with their school boards and giving them information on how to do rentals, how to bring the community in, and how to engage. Sure. So uh, one of the nice things about a con walk is the Art Center has been kind of a beacon, I think, across the state as a way that it works. Way that it works. Well, Not everybody do the same thing, but I that's okay. Some of the very early things that happened that perhaps community members now would not know or be aware of or remember, the Festival of the Arts gave us Melody out front. The um, three service clubs did the okay. plaza. The Master Gardeners got the gardens approved so that we have volunteer help to keep the gardens up. It is a community involvement, and I think a lot of those things happened up front, and we don't really know anymore how they came about in many instances. One of these days, I'll have to write everything down, because most of us <laughs> living up here, yeah, so I need to make sure that there's a manual or something yeah. in case I get hit by a bus tomorrow or something. <laughs> uh, that's just kind of the way it is. I mean, yeah. It's just grown and grown. Mm -hmm. We've had uh, so many wonderful opportunities with the Art Center. Well, thanks, and, and, uh, Well. Uh, and they work. A lot of it is for folks like yourselves. And you know, Lots of you've folks. Done. Lots of folks. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it, it is. It takes a lot of work, though, to make it work. It really does. And it's been such a great interaction. 
tribute to him last year, but... Uh, how much time do you have? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, how about, how about uh, maybe two choice stories about Tom? Well, there? I think interestingly uh, enough, we should probably mention uh, the OPEC committee, which was so instrumental in doing all of those uh, high school graduate concerts that we did. Try to remember, we had um, Tom Snyder, Bill Lamb, Mary Steinke, Gay Grothaus, Mary Jo Newberg, Bob Duffy, Dave, me, and we had, um, who else? Um, oh, Mary Steinke, did you mention Mary? I mentioned Mary, oh, okay. but it was um, Doris Holland. Oh, yes, that's correct. Who passed that's away, not, yeah. yes. It was a great, great committee. Tom was always, um, he always had great ideas, and Ellen Stroman, you forgot about Ellen Ellen Stroman, yes, <coughs> yes. And so we would always have, have to have a party, you know, and Tom would, <laughs> Tom, Tom would say, well, you're going to have alcohol. Well, there were several members of our distinguished committee that said, no, no alcohol. And so that was kind of a, kind of a uh, uh, put down for Tom, because Tom always felt more is better. Well, Tom was always a party, party, yeah, party. Right, right. No. You need to go out and buy these. Uh, elaborate gifts and hand them out for everybody right. too. Was, the guy was just generous from the word go. Right. Yeah. But it was a great committee. Yeah. Very, yeah, very. Was, one didn't know, the other one didn't. That was, it was great. Mm -hmm. 
committee was a prime example of when you want something done, you ask the busiest people. They really were all busy, but very active in that group. So other than that, Tom, Tom stories, well, um, you just get them started on one, and uh, we'll get your watch, and then as it went along, you could steer it if you asked a question in a different direction. Otherwise, it would wrap up. That was Tom, you know, and always interesting. Spinning you think, right? stories. Good yeah. sakes, yeah. could he have done all of that? But he did. Yeah. So he was a good choice for that first award for Chapman. Very good, yep. So we're honored to be standing our name next to his, aren't we? For sure. That's true. Spent a lot of hours with that man and all of his friends. So how is it that we find you in music and the arts? Uh, can you tell us a little bit about your, uh, you know, you were in bands, so what your primary instruments, how you two met, how, how, how it is we find you in Oconomowoc? Well, <laughs> um, we came to Oconomowoc in 1958. I, because I was interviewing for a high school band job that I found out once I got to school here, but there was none, and I was uh, more or less coerced into taking the elementary vocal music job because they wanted, uh, uh, Mr. Anderson wanted a man rather than a woman. He thought kids should have uh, experience with, with uh, male, male teachers. That was the start of it. So I started out teaching the um, general, music. general music in grades one through, I think it was seven or eight. I mean, it was only six. Uh, all, around the, all around the town, because the district hadn't consolidated it anyway. So Betty and I are here in town. We joined the Legion there. And musically, I think that's where we started. Um, we also sang with a choir in the, wa in the water town. But anyway, well, so the LaBelle Coraliers. The LaBelle Coraliers were going great yeah. at that time, too. We all got involved musically there. I guess it just blossomed from there. Me, of course. Once the uh, district got consolidated, then all these various schools came in. We started hiring staff, and Rudy Timmel and I were not just the two only uh, directors that were here anymore. Um, the reputation of the of the band program started to just shoot like a star. It went really, really uh, uh, ballistic, and and so we um, uh, and with the Legion band. Betty and I are very much involved there. I don't know, it was just like a, a harmonious kind of... Um, Actually, um, I would have to say, too, it's the perfect community to be a part of in arts mm -hmm. and culture. I, um, in doing some grant writing for the Festival of the Arts, did a bunch of research on the history of Oconomowoc, and we had um, a brass group, we had a, a band in town, we had artists selling original art on the streets the end of the 1800s. Right. We had the port players, we had, right. it, it was already very rich in culture and arts. Conor Malk had a band going back to 18, well, I'm be careful now, somewhere between 39 and 50. I know that they had uh, sent out to New York and got, uh, bought instruments and picked up a band. So it, it goes way back. Yeah. Start of the, yeah. the history here is very, very rich in arts and culture. Yeah. And then when Kay Stern was directing the choir, remember she had the women's choir, the, yep, the music club, an excellent group. Right. Um, and so Betty sang with that. Oh, goodness. <laughs> Lots it's of opportunities. It's been interwoven ever since we've been here. You know. mm -hmm. and then coming up to, well, that's kind of been outside of town, the choral, or the um, Bill Contra Choir, we got involved in that. So, I don't know, it's been a musical career for both of us. So, there. <laughs> See? So, I have two questions for you. So, Dave, what, you teach uh, many of the band instruments, but what's your primary instrument, and, uh, you know, how is it that you, you had the others? And then, Betty, you, you do vocal, but is vocal, uh, do you do keyboards, or, uh, and you're involved in the arts in the greater way, i.e. festival of the arts, so maybe a little bit well, um, I should say that I was primarily self-taught. Um, my father brought me a trumpet when I was in sixth grade or seventh, I don't recall. I had some lessons with a gal out there in the little village of Helenville where we lived on the farm. Uh, I started there and uh, played in the Helenville Melody Band, which was an adult band. Um, from the scratch. Then I went to a prep school where we didn't have lessons, but it was, uh, they had a, a significant band made up of grades uh, 
9 through uh, 16 uh, was prep and college. What would that be? Mm -hmm. The eight years. Yeah. Anyway, so, and there I learned trumpet. I kept practicing and practicing, and then uh, when it came time for my career, my um, uh, aptitude test uh, <laughs> took a quirky uh, turn and said I'm supposed to be a tree surgeon. My father, um, who thought about that for a while and decided that would not work for transportation, said what was the second choice? And he said, and it said, I said, Dad, it's going to be a music teacher. And he agreed on that, so I wound up at UWM uh, back in the days when it was Miss Wisconsin or Milwaukee State Teachers College, where as a supposed trumpet major, when I was very, very unsure of myself, uh, focused on clarinet. And so I learned the clarinet very well. In fact, wound up playing in the band in college. Uh, the college band and clarinet, and at the same time I was learning all of the other instruments, and the Lord had given me a gift of, to pick them up very easily. And so I learned them all. In fact, I was teaching them in a music store when I was a junior in high school. Um, so that was my start. So I came out here to Conemaugh, and um, then I went back to school and majored on French horn. So when you say, what's my major instrument, I'd have to say, well, probably trumpet, but when I went back to grad school and I took lessons with a trumpet teacher, um, uh, he said, well, who will you all study with? And I said, hey, you're going to believe this, but you're the first one. And so trumpet, I'd have to say, still uh, lays in my major instrument, but clarinet and French horn are very, very dear to me. And so, and I teach them all. Right now, I play them all and teach them all, some better than others. So in my involvement, um, originally was voice and wind instruments. I played all of the clarinets, um, the B flat, the alto, the bass, in the Legion band. Um, and then did a lot of solo voice work with the Legion band. Also did some studying with Kester, which was marvelous. And a couple of other gals um, actually through um, Ellen McDonald at the Heartland Music. Um, so pretty much I have now concentrated on vocal. And then of course David and I both have sung with bel canto, which has been a very fulfilling experience. And we sang a lot of times with the Legion Band as duets. I think over the years, I can't imagine how many times we did that, where it'd be, you know, summer concerts, now there's always a soloist. In those days, there wasn't always. We, we fill that gap many times. Um, Lots of Memorial Day, Veterans Day, yeah. that kind of thing. Yeah, still doing. Yeah. Yeah. The programs are listed and you'll see those. The idea, this is all completed. The auditorium is coming together. Everything uh, looks so, um, so incredibly new and everything. And we think, well, all these artists coming in, we have to have a green room don't we? And they were looked around for it and uh, we noticed this was slated as a storage room. Uh, we talked to the administration about it and they agreed to let us use it for a green room. Uh, so the OPATH then is part of the funds that we had, had uh, generated. Uh, uses a lot of that money to furnish this room. It's beautiful inside. And uh, uh, that has been the green room for, well, ever since we started the series. An interesting um, observation about the Celebration Concert Series is the fact that it was all of the arts. We had, of course, the visual arts of Charles Dix. We had many of the musicians who were professionals and graduates of high school um, in orchestra, band, vocal. We also had um, an actor, Sean Sinitsky, who mm -hmm. did some Shakespeare. So it truly was a series of all of the arts. And I might mention that Roberta was um, the second concert on our second series, Roberta Carpenter and Friends. Yep. It is right there. And this also is Matt Bruno. For right, the, for dance. For the dance. Mm -hmm. His uh, concert was together with Charles Dix's display. So it was quite a, quite a uh, colorful evening. Uh, he was extraordinary. So we have Roberta here. Yes. 
There you go. Well, Roberta. Hey, there we go. President. Uh, we should uh, say that this uh, this uh, sign is just outside the old orchestra room and the choir room where you know these, those early years took place. So it's nice to come back and, and share yeah. these moments with you. Now looking back and seeing all that you did, and we're back here where it all took place. Yeah. Won't forget your concert. Thank you. <laughs> and it was Roberta Carpenter and friends, and, and those friends, friends yeah. are still here in our community and, and playing and teaching. And this is um, Chelsea. Um, Marshall? Marshall? No, Jan Marshall. Marshall. Yeah, Jan. Yes. Is she's she still around? Uh, she is, still and I, I visited with Jan uh, about two weeks ago. Wow. Uh, Jan and I had a long history of playing Messiah together every year, mm -hmm. and it was a favorite thing for hers. Yeah. And she and I taught, uh, we did a chamber music clinic for uh, youth in, mm -hmm. in the community for uh, about 14 years. Right. Yeah. Yep. And she right. was on that program, by the way. Yes, As a matter of fact, I should say this Jan Marshall edited the cello parts for the uh, Fanfare for Lake Country theme for cello. So oh, okay. great. Yes. All right. Yes. Oh, that's great. Anyway, anyway, that's great. Great to see this. Um, let's see, one, two, Wonderful three, students. four, five, and five minutes, 25 concerts. <laughs> that's amazing. We're joined now by Mike Harrell. Mike was shoulder to shoulder in the trenches with Dave and Betty as they worked on community projects that you'll recognize today. Dave has been like a ripple, just seeing all these people he's been impactful for. Um, kind of like a stone thrown in the water, because he, he, he has um, been also very impactful to people um, local and far away, because I hear from, from past students, and they're just so happy and so grateful that he was their teacher. You don't need to be able to read music to uh, tell the the uh, fact that the Royals have been so impactful into the Oconomowoc community for years, um, and we are so grateful that you are shining stars for our community, and we wish you the very best to Mr. and Mrs. Oconomowoc. Thank you very much. Ellen McDonald is somebody who has known Dave and Betty for a good long while. She was a student of Dave's. She has a special story to tell about growing up, and she's been in our community in the music uh, field for many years. Junior High Wind Ensemble, 
had the great experience of going to Interlaken. Thank you. That changed my life. Um, and farther on, I've gotten to know Dave and Betty as adults and wonderful people. And I'm just thankful to be a part of this. I'm sorry I'm not there in person, but uh, Julie, Jenny, Renata, please uh, give your parents big hugs because they're really cool people. Thank you so much. We're here at the home of uh, Pauline Bemis, and we're here with Dave Ferris, and uh, they know Dave and Betty from way back and have a couple of stories to tell us. Okay. All right. Hi, I joined the band in 1960. Rudy Timmel was directing, and he directed for about four or five years, and then Walt Stamstead from Watertown directed. Well, in 1969, Dave Ryle took over. And in fact, Dave had been playing in the band, and so did Betty, of course. And the Royals and uh, I came to Oconomowoc just about the same time. Well, um, we had a really fun time with Dave directing. He also had wonderful concerts, and he selected great music. And he was directing the band in 1977, when we won first place nationally for the American Legion Band Competition. And everyone was very happy about that. And we, the band went on lots and lots of trips. We went to the Warren's Cranberry Festival several times. And the band would march in the parade and they would pay us for marching. And the band would go to King, Wisconsin, play at the Veterans Home. And now Dave's going to tell tell us some more things about the fun times we had. Well, we had certainly had fun in the Legion band for me most of the, most of the years. Of course, I knew Dave originally. He was my sixth grade band director, got me started playing the tuba, and he was also my junior high band director. And then. About that, about the time I was finishing up junior high, I joined the American Legion Band in 1968. That was uh, one year before Dave became the uh, band director. And uh, oh boy, tell about the horse band. Uh, Dave, I participated, and Dave did also. We uh, had a uh, mounted band in the Milwaukee circus parades horseback riding and playing. Not all that easy. Especially with tuba. Yeah, yes. No. I went to one rehearsal with my cornet, but um, I sneezed so much from all the horses that someone had to take me home, and that was the end of my career for horse band. Uh, this photo was taken when I was in seventh grade at the Conamark Junior High School. I was in Dave Royal's band. Uh, one of my classmates, Mike Newfer, and I decided to come up with a little prank pose, and I put my tuba at the back of Dave Royal's VW microbus, and uh, that's how it came out. So he had a jet-propelled uh, vehicle at that time. Dave, what year was that we went to Boston? Uh, we went to the National Legion Convention in, in 1980, Boston, Massachusetts. Yes, and we had the Legion Color Guard, and we had a, a, a Gals Color Guard, and I think we took second there, but it was a really, really fun trip. Dave was uh, very good as a motivator, as a band director. He would uh, explain the music and do a little demonstrating, and you know, you could have played it better this way and, and demonstrating that way, and then he was... He put us to work a little bit too. He, when we were in school, here's your weekly sheet. You're supposed to keep track of your practice hours, and you were supposed to fill up those hours during the week of practicing. So, and uh, he, he was good at selecting interesting and somewhat challenging music too, which that also helped bring out the better quality of playing. Yes, and we used to practice year round except for two weeks at Christmas. And that really helped. And um, Dave always chose music that the people enjoyed playing also and that we could learn something from. And um, it was 
everyone looked forward to going to the rehearsals. And then in those years, we would go out and have a drink after rehearsals, and everyone looked forward to that too. Because it was, um, then you got to know the band members a lot better. Hmm? Yes? Yeah. Socializing time. They would uh, yeah. come to the end of a piece when we're rehearsing and, Doc, what's the score? <laughs> that was uh, all, all the games, the Packers, the uh, Bucks, and the Brewers, or the Braves, of course, too. Yes. When it was the Braves. But Doc Hansen played <laughs> really he, well. I think, I think he did that at some concerts, too. Yes. <laughs> they seem to be able to play while listening to various games. I participated with the uh, Milwaukee Circus Parade Connemore Mounted Band on horses three times in 71, 2, and 3. And uh, one of our practice sessions, a uh, photographer from the uh, Arkansas Freeman was there taking some photos and, and uh, getting some stories. And there's a couple of pictures I have here of myself. One, I'm looking at my horn on the ground trying to think, well, see, can I get that myself? without having to grab it and step way up on the horse with all that extra weight. And then the second picture I thought, yeah, maybe I can have the horse walk close to the horn, I'll lean over and pick up the horn. Yeah, well, not quite. <laughs> so <laughs> someone had to pick it up for me. I have so many memories from being in the Legion Band for 58 years, and some of the very best memories were of Dave and Betty Royal, how much they added to the Legion Band and how they would sing together beautifully for our concerts. And I wish them all the best in the whole world. I've only been in the band a mere 50 years, so I don't have quite as many memories as Pauline has, but mine are all equally terrific. And uh, Dave really helped the band grow and uh, stay, stay strong and actually improved during his years. Uh, just all sorts of good things that Dave would do to help the band do well. Uh, Dave and Betty, thanks a lot for many, many years and many, many hours of working with me and the community and the Legion Band. Uh, we were neighbors about a mile apart for a few years too and uh, best of luck into the next years. Shell, and we did. 
there were cake pans flying all over and in the lake, and everyone got very wet and soaked, and then we had to cancel the concert. <laughs> band noticeably improved when Dave started directing you. He was a good promoter, got uh, more players, the, uh, the numbers kind of swelled, and uh, our audiences uh, grew also because we had some very interesting pro programs. Yes, and Dave worked really well with uh, our Legion host and, and made sure that we always had um, Legion members here listening to the concert and presenting the colors. And they would help us, like for July 4th concerts, they'd help us with uh, lighting fireworks and getting people up on the stage with the largest partners. Uh, a big thank you to Dave and Betty for their many years of uh, performing and working with the American Legion Band. We had lots of success, lots of fun, and uh, lots of memories. Some of them are funny and some of them are kind of strange. Uh, you may, may be hearing some traffic noise in the background. Uh, we have lived with that with our summer concerts all the time. And uh, in the earlier days when the trains would blow their whistles, we could uh, hear train whistles too, every once in a while. Yes, I remember all the fun times and the very musical times with Dave and Betty and all the wonderful concerts here in the band shell which is now the Rodi Memorial Band Show. We're joined now by Dr. Pat Newdecker. Pat is a former superintendent of schools for the Oconomowoc School District and was a visionary who helped bring about the Oconomowoc Arts Center. The Newdecker Auditorium is named after Pat and she worked with Dave and Betty and has stories to tell. Here's Pat. We're outside at the Tri-Club Plaza which was initiated actually by the Kiwanis Club and quickly grew into a much larger project, including the Oconomowoc Lions, Kiwanis, and Rotary, working together to fund the construction of this beautiful outdoor space. Uh, we've always been so proud of this space, but I'm most proud that our students and our patrons, every time they're here, see the name Tri Club Plaza and recognize the three clubs that work together to make this happen. Greetings. I'm Pat Newdecker. I'm the former superintendent of schools of the Oconomowoc Area School District. And I had the pleasure of knowing Dave and Betty Royal professionally and personally. And I'm here tonight to share this wonderful award and read a tribute to them. Music is magical. It gives us memories and connects people, just like Dave and Betty do. Dave and Betty have shared their love of music and their many talents with so many of us, and I, for one, am thankful to know them as friends. I've known Dave and Betty for almost 20 years, and I know how much they've done for music, for so many of us, and for our entire community. It will be hard to capture the many notes which have filled the score for so many years. I first met Dave when he was a band teacher and I was a new principal at Oconomowoc Middle School in the year 1999. His reputation was one of talent, quality, and dedication. And I soon learned of the many contributions he had made to students and to our school. His concerts were glorious and he filled our former old auditorium with people and amazing sounds. I was inspired by his energy. It seemed like he was always on the move and always full of life. He mastered the art of teaching and his high expectations, wisdom, and nurturing ways made our students flourish. I had only been at the middle school for a few weeks when Dave asked if I would like to come to their house for dinner. I was new to Oconomowoc and somewhat as alone as I had begun my principal role while my husband Kurt remained in our former location and prepared for the move. I was thrilled to be invited and I remember thinking how kind that invitation was. Well little did I know that that one evening would create such a lasting impression on me. One of graciousness, 
warm hospitality, and genuine compassion, not to mention an amazing meal, great conversation, and of course, Betty. When I met Betty, I was instantly drawn to her, bubbly, friendly, and so interesting. She has a way of making you feel like you're special. Her voice lifts your spirit, and her attention to you is as if you were the only person in the room at the moment. She is an original at being in the moment. She can converse about lofty ideas and also simple girl stuff, in addition to her laugh, which is contagious. I could tell that she was a planner, someone who got things done. And for all of those reasons, I wanted a little more of Betty in my life. So through the years, Kurt and I got to know the Royals more. We attended events together, worked on projects, and my fond memories include a school field trip to Chicago for musical theater, numerous concerts, the Waukesha Symphony Board and Gala, Festival of the Arts, Bel Canto, and of course, working together on the Oconomowoc Arts Center referendum and the many needed enhancements. It is fitting that this award be presented in our glorious Oconomowoc Arts Center, which represents so much of the work and the contributions the Royals have made. The students who have been nurtured by Dave, our understanding and appreciation for high quality musical literature, the loyal Royals in the audience of so many performances, the artist's screen room, the bronze sculpture melody, and even the lobby furniture have all been touched and made possible through the talent, dedication, and leadership of this amazing couple. The royal footprint is all around us. Dave and Betty are being honored for their many contributions to music, but I would also include their many other contributions as well. Let their living example of being kind, generous, faithful, loving, and dedicated to purposes well beyond themselves be a lesson for all of us. The Royals are a magical couple. They've given us so much and they've touched us and connected us in so many ways. I personally thank Dave and Betty and I know our community joins me in recognizing them, thanking them, and congratulating them on this well-deserved award. Thank you, Dave and Betty. <laughs>
This is the Chapter Ward sign that hangs in the Oconomowoc Arts Center lobby. It's near the right entry door to the hall and bears the names of those people who received the award as well as our sponsors and a little bit about Frank S. Chapel. There is a page on the Oconomowoc Chamber Orchestra website about the Chatfield Award. You'll see the um, PDFs of the letters that were written from the mayor or Dr. Newdecker. Um, you'll see the links to the videos that are on YouTube, and we will continue to update the Chatfield Award page with the latest um, Chatfield Award um, information and presentations. If you would like to stay in touch with the Oconomowoc Chamber Orchestra and know about the latest event, the best way to do that is to receive the e-newsletter. The e-newsletter is sent out, oh, about once a month, and uh, you can sign up for it on the Oconomowoc Chamber Orchestra homepage of the website. There's a little form that you put your email in, and uh, you'll then be able to receive it. We also have a Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash Oconorch, O-C-O-N-O-R-C-H, and you're welcome to uh, uh, join us for that as well. We thank our business sponsors and advertisers and supporters that make the Jackfield Award possible, as well as the Oconomowoc Chamber Orchestra. You'll see now the advertisements and the supporters' names. We ask that you support them in the same way they supported us. We're so uh, appreciative of their support. And if you would like to support us, we have a GoFundMe page. There's a donation page on the orchestra's website. We welcome and appreciate your support for the orchestra.
Thank <laughs> you.